They can control this football game from this point forward with a first down. Need a big play from this defense. Showing blitz. Going to run it, and he's hit, and the ball's on the ground. The Blazers have the football, maybe. Blazer and the Blazers it. have the football. What a defensive play, and that was number 34, Chris Pope. He clocks at 43.5 seconds. They have one timeout left. They're going to send everybody, guys. You better watch out. Caden. Hand off inside, gets down, fights it, touchdown, Cedric! What a run by the freshman. The true freshman just would not go down there, Tom. Absolutely, Dick. And uh, he got hit initially on about the four-yard line. And then I tell you what, just the sure ability took him in. They've got one timeout. Fake the run. He wants to throw. Pressure at those downfield. We got coverage down there. Intercepted. There's going to be a flag on Valdosta State. That's coming back. Dominique Wheeler's going to get a flag on that when he's back at the 35 to 30, and it doesn't matter. And I hate it for Dominique, and uh, the flag is going to return it. The David Dean Show, your weekly look at Valdosta State University Blazer football. Here's your host, Dick Rocky, along with head coach David Dean, for a look at this week's Blazer football action. Hello and welcome to the David Dean Show. I'm Dick Rocky with the head coach, Valdosta State, 38 to 31 over Texas A&M Kingsville in our final regular season football game of the season on a very cool night in Valdosta, Georgia. Coach, and we were just talking a good win over a football team that left Valdosta five and five, but it's hard to imagine they're five and five. Well, unfortunately, they've got a very tough schedule like us and lost to West Texas A&M and Midwestern State, who were two of the top teams in the country and then lost to two Gold South Conference teams, us and North Alabama. So they're a very good football team, and just like we said, you know, we wouldn't want to play those guys again. They're, they're awfully, awfully good. Uh, you know, amazing game is just back and forth. You know, when you think you had a little momentum, you didn't, they'd come back and they'd take the lead, and they maybe thought they had Val Austin, Val Austin State would come back. It was, a, it was just a battle. It was. It was much like two weeks ago when we played Delta State. Neither team wanted to fold, and. Uh, everybody kept throwing punches at each other, and it was two very good football teams, I think, that, uh, that came out and put on a very good show for the fans. They did. Let's take a break, and we'll be back with the first half in just a moment. Welcome back to the David Dean Show. Coach, you go into this game, your mission is almost complete of, of running the table and keep that winning streak going to secure the playoff spot. We did. What's your feelings right now? Well, very good. I mean, we're sitting in a very good situation right now. We had to win the last six games, we felt, to make it to the playoffs. We did that. We get to sit back in the last week of the season and just kind of see where everything folds out. I, I don't think we're going to be any worse than third in the region. Uh, if some things happen, we can may move up to two and get, a, get an off yeah. week, an extra off week. So we feel very good with where we are right now, and uh, we need this break. We play 10 straight weeks, 10 very physical football games for 10 straight weeks. Our kids mentally need a break. Coaches need a break. So this comes at a very good time for us. All right, Coach, let's watch the first half highlights. It was a wild one. It was uh, 21, what, 38 points in the first half. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a very good night. I thought that uh, I thought our kids came out ready to play. I, I give Texas A&M Kingsville a lot of credit. They did too, coming off a short week and having to travel. Uh, we come out here in the the opening opening drive, and we did get a first down and, and move the ball and kind of change the field position a little bit. But we just didn't did weren't able to score on that first drive, and we ended up getting a nice nice punt here at the end, and, and they had a penalty that backed them up inside the ten. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we we let them off the hook right here. The first play, remnants of Delta State two weeks ago, the first play on offense, they, they hit a big play for a touchdown. Go up seven to nothing. We're in good position. He just makes a great throw. We just kind of missed time the, the throw. And 
I thought uh, it was good to have Austin back. Austin's not quite 100%, but he is a lot better than he was a couple of weeks ago. Big throw right here to Shontavious Jones. He goes up over the top of the corner and makes the catch and quickly ties the game back up, which was great for us to answer offensively to come back in there and do that. A good job here of stopping the run early in the ball game. They switch running backs late. And, uh, well, they had a really good good running back that, that came in and was very hard to tackle. Good play right there by Tyler Josie. Knocks the ball loose. We aren't able to get it. We had several fumbles last night that we caused that we just couldn't get on. A good run again right there by Austin Scott. And what a great play right here by Reggie Lewis. He breaks all kinds of tackles and just great speed there to the end zone. That was a big play for us to, to be able to answer again and go up 14 to seven. Good play here by Matt Pierce and Jeremy Grable on their little bubble screen, not letting them get to the to the sideline. And big third down conversion here that they make and just poor tackling. You know, we're not taking good angles and wrapping up. And we give them too many, too many yards after the catch. Good pursuit here on the run game again, not letting them get to the edge. They have a lot of speed and we couldn't, we couldn't allow them to get to the edge. Great play here by Ryan Smith. I'm glad to see him get that interception down there that took them out of field goal range. Uh, they were in field goal range and it took them out. This is a third down conversion we throw to Shontavious. Uh, we end up going the next three and, and having to punt. Another big play right there. Tyler causes another fumble that they get back on. And then here's another good play right there. Chris Pope reading his keys and making a break on the ball, makes a great interception. And this is the one right here that was probably the most disappointing. We had good field position there, at least can get it down in to field goal range at worst, and we don't do it. We, uh, we throw the ball deep right there, and it falls incomplete. We end up having to punt and give the ball back to them. We don't convert on that turnover. That's two straight turnovers that we don't convert on, which was a little disappointing. Again, there's a great job there on the bubble screen that we're not letting them get to the outside. That was one thing that they do very well all year long. And then great throw and catch right here over the middle, right in between all of our defenders. And he just makes a great, great throw, pinpoints it in there. We do a good job here down on the goal line. We, we shut them down and shut down the run. And here's a great play right here. Good read there by the quarterback. Gets to the outside and outruns us into the end zone to tie it up. And uh, we get a good kickoff return. We complete a pass right here before this. And then this is a big third down conversion right here to, to Quinn Robinson. I thought Quinn played an outstanding football game. Made three key catches in that game. We found a mismatch right here. We had Gerald Ford lined up over a linebacker. and. Uh, great job there by Caden of seeing that mismatch and, and hitting a big play there right before the half. And then unfortunately, we give them a big play. Let them get back down into field goal range. And, uh, you know, if we could have gone in 21 to 14, it would have been a little bit different game. But to their credit, they do a good job of getting back down there. We do a good job of covering up here, and he has to throw the ball away. And uh, they are able to kick a field goal there right before the half. We had a couple of nice plays and got ourselves back down almost into field goal range, but time ran out on us. Well, again, it was just a back and forth football game. And I, I got to mention Tyler Josie. What a, what a, he told me after the game on the radio, a career, he said probably the best game he's ever played. <laughs> well, it's, it's exactly what Coach Chambers, his, his uh, defensive line coach, said. He said he said he saved his best game for his, his last uh, home regular season game. And just, you can't say enough about that kid. What, what a great, great career he's had here. But uh, to, to finish it off that way is just unbelievable. And what we're talking about, eight, he had eight tackles, four tackles for loss, four quarterback sacks, almost unheard of. But a great night for him. And the first half was good. The second half gets very, very exciting. We'll be back with that in just a minute. Hello, my name is Cam Short, offensive lineman from Thomason, Georgia. You are watching the David Dean Show. Go Blazers. Coach, we go into the locker room with the lead, close football game. At what point, as you're walking into the locker room, are, are you figuring out what you're going to say to your team? There's a time when you maybe want to be a little harsh, a time where you be a different person. Does that, every week, does it change? It does. It depends on how you're playing and, and the attitude of the football team and what you do out there. If we're making a lot of mental mistakes, you know, you want to grab their attention. Uh, I thought for the most part we were playing very good. We we're playing a good football team. The one thing that I did want to address was the penalties that we were mm -hmm. making. You know, just 
they were hurting us in field position, different things, and then obviously the drops. We had a couple of drops in key situations in that ball game. But the one thing that I wanted to make sure that we did was keep putting that pressure on the quarterback, and that's, and that's what we did. All right, let's watch the second half here. It's another exciting second half of football for Valdosta State, which most of them seem to be. <laughs> now we find a way to make it, uh, make it pretty interesting. And as long as we keep finding ways to win, I'm, I'm happy with that. But, uh, we'll do a good job here on our kickoff coverage. This, they were one of the best kickoff return teams in the country. And you can see we got a lot of guys flying down there. Great play here by, by Ryan Smith. That was a good job there by Theseus to force him to go outside. And this is, again, this is just so disappointing. We've got them inside the 10 and then first play they break a long run and, and get outside the 10 yard line. We got a great opportunity to get the ball in good field position. And as you see, we come back here and. We're back down inside the 20. That was a third down and long after a penalty that we had. And uh, right here, this is this is a mistake that they make that we need to make them pay for, and we don't. They uh, they fumble the bobble the the kick there, and we don't make the the tackle in time. And they come back out and try and establish the run. And here's the other running back that they had, and he was just a bowling ball. He was hard to bring down. Ran the ball very hard. Did a good job in their in their pass protection. We do a good job of covering up right there deep and here's a third down play that's again just a great throw and catch. That's the only place that, that he can throw that ball that they can catch it. And unfortunately they come back take the lead and you know we're trying to again have to come back and answer. We've got to find a way to get the ball back down the field and we do a good job again moving it here. We're mixing up the throw and the run. I thought again Cedric O'Neill a great job of running the football, finding holes and getting down uh, into position for us. Good throw here. This is one that Sean Tavius dropped earlier in the game. He comes back and he makes a great catch. We get down into this area here and uh, we throw two incomplete passes. We caught one in the end zone, but his, his foot was on the line, so we had to settle for the, for the tie. And Daniel Anderson comes in and kicks the, the short field goal. Great pursuit right there by Jeremy Grable again on that bubble screen. And this was, or this was one that I, I wish we could have been able to get to and intercept that and get good field position. And again, here's another great third down conversion. Reggie Lewis was held very bad on that. And he kept fighting, and to his credit, he wasn't going to be covered. And then a big throw right here to, to Quinn. And uh, you talk about a guy that's coming off a neck injury to lower his shoulder like that and run. What a great job he did. And, Good read there by Caden Cochran. Pulls the ball down inside the five and then great throw and catch right here to, to Gerald Ford. What a great move Gerald made. And then Caden Cochran throws the ball in the perfect position for the touchdown. We end up getting the lead again. Got to make a stop. And then unfortunately right here, same thing. They throw it right in the middle of everybody and then we just do a poor job of tackling. We miss a tackle there and there. He does a good job of cutting back here. But to our credit, we didn't give up. We kept fighting, kept running. There's a big defensive tackle right there, Lawrence Virgil, who ran all the way down there to make the stop. We do a good job here for a couple of plays of, of keeping them out of the end zone, and they do a good job here. Good scheme, Let, leave the tight end uh, alone, and, and they hit him in the end zone for a touchdown to tie the game back up. And if you just watch this, you watch how hard Cedric O'Neill runs late in the ball game. We talked about this before. He just he seems to get stronger and stronger as the game goes on. Uh, here's a big mistake. Great play there by their by their great linebacker, All-American linebacker, tips the ball. And but we got to have a great stop here by our defense. Good play there by Tevin Davis. Makes an outstanding stop. And but we get down right here. And I'm just not sure I understand that that call right there, but. Great play there by Tyler getting back there. And this is the fourth down play. Causes the fumble again. And we get back there and get on it. And gives us good field position. Gives us a shorter field to, to take the ball down. And you can see Cedric O'Neill, how he's breaking tackles. Now our offensive line is, is uh, doing a great job of, of blocking. Great throw again right here to, to Quinn for a third down conversion once again. And then a good run. Cedric breaking tackles, using the stiff arm, and a big play right here. You watch him, he just he wasn't going to be denied of that touchdown. Sticks that ball in the end zone. 
We score with less than 40 seconds. We get a big interception right here. Dominique Wheeler gets called for pass interference there and makes a great return. And even though uh, that was called back, the one thing that it did do is it ran off a lot of time on the clock. And it only gave them one opportunity to, to throw the ball down the field again. And we got great pursuit, great pressure, and he wasn't able to throw the football. Great win for Valdosta State to finish the regular season eight and two. And uh, coach at last drive, eight plays, 57 yards, took three minutes off the clock, a little more than three minutes. And Cedric out of the 57 had 48 yards rushing. And, and we always have to remind ourselves, those five guys up front, but he was a, a freshman that you, I said to you last night, he was a freshman, he said, here's the football, get it into the end zone. Yeah, normally you don't do that. You don't put it in the hands of a freshman, but, but we did. We put it, those five guys up front, those five seniors that we have up front, and, and then that freshman, and, and again, just what an outstanding job. When, when we left that huddle, we said we wanted to go down and we wanted to score and not leave them any time to be able to come back down the field, and that's exactly what they did. Okay, Coach, we'll be back with the Gander Mountain scoreboard in just a moment. I'm Tyler Josie, defensive end from Dublin, Georgia, and you are watching the David Dean Show. Go Blazers! Welcome back to the Gander Mountain scoreboard, Coach. Let's take a quick look. Again, this is on a – we're taping this on a Friday morning, so we're looking ahead at the games to be played on Sunday. Real quickly, uh, West Alabama, Abilene Christian. That's going to be a heck of a football game. They've got to travel out to Texas and play, and Abilene Christian is a very good football team. Uh, Carson Newman, who's playing really well, has Tusculum this weekend. Yeah, they, they will probably beat Tusculum. Tusculum struggling this year. Uh, Lenore Ryan and Newberry. It's pretty much the same thing, I think. Yeah, it is. It's, you know, Newberry's kind of been up and down all year long. Lenore Ryan's played very good football, kind of like Carson Newman. They're hitting their best football right now. And always a big game. Albany State and Fort Valley, they're both still in the picture. They are. That, that's going to decide who goes to the SIAC championship. Uh, the winner of that one and the winner of the Miles Tuskegee game will end up being in the uh, SIAC championship the following week. Yeah. And a big game to look for. This last one I'll mention uh, coming up in the November the 10th, Mars Hill and Carson Newman finish the season. That's going to be a big one. They, Mars Hill has a week off and then play Carson Newman, and that it may end up being a, a deciding factor on who ends up going to the playoffs, and it could be big for us because we may move up to that number two spot. Absolutely. So that's a look at some games coming up this uh, Saturday. And uh, let's take another break, and we'll be back with the Langdale Honda Kia look ahead in just a moment. I got my MBA online at VSU. As a working mom who travels on business, I needed an MBA program that fit my schedule and allowed me to balance both my work and home life. VSU's Web MBA was perfect. I was able to spend time with my family in the evenings and then complete my assignments. My MBA is one of my greatest accomplishments. It was hard work, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. Don't wait. Start your MBA today. Welcome back to the Langdale Honda Kia Look Ahead. And Coach, the look ahead this week is going to be your 15 seniors. going to let you take the, the floor here and talk about them. <laughs> well, I tell you, it's always tough when you start talking about your seniors, guys that you've been with for a long time. We'll just kind of go by position. Uh, wide receiver position, we, we lose James Oliver. Uh, running back position, we lose Theseus Jackson, who has been a great player for us, great special team player for us. Uh, Justin Roberts, uh, quarterback, that's been one of those guys that's been a great leader for our football yeah. team. You know, uh, he's going to forego his senior year, so we're actually treating him like a senior this year. He's going to get into coaching. Daniel Anderson, again, a guy that started for us as a true freshman kicker, has had an outstanding senior year. In the secondary, uh, Alex Webster and Matt Pierce, you know, both of those guys started for us as freshmen, played a lot as freshmen and uh, you have, have had outstanding careers. Three linebackers, Brandon White, Chaz Matthews, and Ryan Smith, all three of those guys. Two of those guys are outstanding special teams players. Ryan Smith's been a three-year starter for us. Uh, Tyler Josie, who had an outstanding game last night, plays defensive end. Tyler's actually a six-year player for us. He broke his foot one year. We redshirted and he broke his other foot the next year, so we had a medical redshirt on him. And then probably the biggest hits, the five offensive linemen, Jake Thomas, uh, Edmund Kugelba, Mesh Wokamati, Ryan Schrader, and Cam Short. And just can't say enough about what they've done for this football team this year. Great group of seniors, good guys, won a lot of football games for us. And I know this, when they leave this, this program and go off, they're, they're going to be solid, solid people in their communities. And we're going to miss them, 
then uh, hopefully we got four or five more games left with them. I hope so. Coach, I want to ask you, uh, just to be sure, our, our next game would be November the 17th unless we ended up at first or second in the region. November 17th will be the first round of the playoffs, and if we end up being a number one or two, then it bumps to the, to the 24th, I guess. So we've got 16 days off or 23 days off if you, as you look at it. Well, great sen uh, finish to the season for your football team. Cong for your football team, congratulations on that. Blazers finished the season eight and two, and we've got some time off. And uh, as Coach said, if we stay anywhere below second place, our next uh, tournament game or the first tournament game will be November the 17th. If we can get that first or second bid, it'll be a week later than that. But otherwise, a great season for Valdosta State and we still have a lot of action and a lot of football games left to be played. So for the head coach, David Dean, I'm Dick Rocky. Have a good week.